because Greg is off, uh, and you can't really blame him. It's kind of a slow news day, right? <laughs> Some people have asked me offline, but I'm actually not sure what the King of Late Night is up to tonight. Uh, but we do know he's not riding roller coasters at Six Flags because they have a height requirement. <laughs> I love you, Greg. Don't ban me from the show. Uh, as for our country, where the hell are we after indicting a president for the first time in our 246-year history? That's right. America's 246, same age as Dianne Feinstein. <laughs> Like a lot of you, I watched Trump fly home today after getting indicted, and I gotta be honest, I found the whole thing disturbing. But I will admit, after two years of Biden, it was refreshing to see a president make it up the airplane steps in one try. <laughs> now, the good news for the country is they didn't handcuff Trump, so we were spared the banana republic image of a president in handcuffs. Yeah, Alvin Bragg was in a really tough spot on that one. I mean, after all, if he handcuffs a president, Next thing you know, I'll have to start handcuffing robbers and rapists and murderers. <laughs> Come on, Bragg. Come on, man. No, no, under Alvin Bragg's woke prison policies, New York looks like Gotham City before Batman comes, except Batman ain't coming because he's not vaccinated. Nope. <laughs> But that's where most Americans find themselves today. We're wondering how we went from feeling like a shining city on a hill to a rundown place where you can buy a house for a dollar, you know? But enough about Kat's hometown of Detroit. Um, <laughs> I love you, Kat. We were told Trump got indicted because nobody was above the law. Uh-uh. But Alvin Bragg has lowered 52% of violent felonies to a misdemeanor. That's why no objective observer sees this indictment as anything more than a political persecution. Alvin Bragg ran for office on a vow that he would arrest Donald Trump. And he did this in New York City, a town that's so liberal they wanted to defund the cop and the village people. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Which is why Alvin Bragg has everything to win, even if he loses the case. You see, Democrats have a long history of failing upwards simply by becoming national names. And if you don't believe me, ask Mayor Pete Buttigieg who did such a poor job with the roads in South Bend, Indiana, the locals nicknamed him Pothole Pete. <laughs> now, in Mayor Pete's defense, it's hard to fix potholes and breastfeed babies at the same time. <laughs> but throw in a failed presidential run, and the next thing you know, Pothole Pete was in charge of every road in America as Transportation Secretary Pete. Isn't it insane to think Pothole Pete is in charge of transportation? That's like having an education secretary named Summer School Sal, you know? <laughs> or a vice president named Kamala Harris. <laughs> She's another person who failed her way to higher office. Kamala ran for the Democratic nomination and was polling at 1% when she dropped out. Think about that. Our first female vice president was less popular with Americans than Meghan Markle is with Britons. <laughs> <laughs> but for Alvin Bragg, this is his pothole Pete moment. Sure, crime's through the roof. Women are getting assaulted left and right in the city. But a Democrat DA doesn't need to arrest violent felons as long as he's got Stormy Daniels putting guys in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that one, Melania. Uh, <laughs> kidding. And that's where we find ourselves tonight. Trump has been indicted because Alvin Bragg doesn't have the balls to go after real criminals. And Democrats are fine with it because their obsession with getting Trump has gotten so emotional, it's denying them the self-awareness that would otherwise tell them, you know, they sound insane to normal people. I mean, think about this. Democrats swore Trump colluded with Russia to swing an election, and when that didn't work, they impeached him for meddling in Ukraine. And when that didn't work, they impeached him for trying to stage a coup. And when that didn't work, they raided his house and said he stole classified documents. None of it worked. But today, they finally got their big moment. Trump got arrested for financial crimes? Dude, this was their OJ chase. But in this instance, the guy they claimed had murdered Nicole is only being charged with double parking outside her house. <laughs> and they expect every one of us to be just as excited as they are because they don't have the self-awareness to realize most people look at them and saying, yo, these <laughs> are crazy. <laughs> So true. Donald Trump was the first president to be impeached twice. That went nowhere. Now he's become the first president to be arrested. That'll go nowhere. They say you never forget your first. 
you know, unless it was with Bill Cosby. Um, <laughs> Jimmy. And by the way, don't come at me with that Cosby joke. He is out of jail, by the way. As far as I'm concerned, this whole case is just a he said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said. <laughs> It's a stupid joke, but nothing's a stupider, dumber joke than this indictment. Democrats would have you believe they arrested a former president because the man is out of control. But history will show that they were. And, you know, for all I know, who knows how it will play out, but the party that gave us two terms of Bill Clinton is once again trying to convince you that Donald Trump is the most disgusting thing that's ever happened in the Oval Office, to which I say, close, but no cigar. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.